Hey, what's up? It's Y, and this week you are watching a very special episode of Why Stop Now, where I have guest Chansey Williams with me today. Yeah, how's it going? Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this with oh, me. Oh, anytime. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm so excited to talk to you and hear a little bit about your life. Yeah, that's great. We're here at the warehouse tonight where you'll be performing. How do you feel going into that? Uh, we always love playing in Grand Junction. You know, we've <clears throat> played the warehouse over the years. Uh, can't remember how many years we've been playing here, but it's always a good time. The foods here is awesome, and uh, Butch, who owns it's great to work with. So we always like to have a good excuse to come back to Grand Junction. That's awesome. So how many times do you think you've been here, performed at the warehouse? Um, Probably five or six, I bet. Okay. Seven, I don't know. It's hard to, hard to tell. I think we came, maybe we were here once before COVID, and then several times after. So yeah, we try to hit it about once a year. Awesome, it seems like a good venue to come to. Oh, it's great, yeah. It's a, <laughs> these towns are lucky to have venues like this because they bring a lot of national acts and stuff, so it's, it's a cool place for sure. We sure love it, like being in college and getting to come watch the big named people. Like, that's so fun because a lot of times if you're not from Denver, or like I'm originally from Nevada, so I'd have to go to Vegas in order to see anything. Right. So it's pretty fun to like, have in my college town able to go watch some like really big names yeah they do a good job bringing acts in you know it's yeah, like you said it's nice having a place where you don't have to travel too far and okay. don't have to go to denver all the time or wherever to see national acts so it's it's a fun place for sure yeah i'm so excited to to watch you tonight yeah so we're excited to play let's talk a little bit about you tell me where are you from originally so i grew up on a ranch in uh northeast corner of wyoming a small town called moorcroft okay. and uh yeah, folks ranch there. My mom was a school teacher, and then uh, we grew up rodeoing, so me and my brothers. And So I went to Casper College in Wyoming and rodeoed there three years, and then went on to the University of Wyoming and finished my college rodeo career there and stayed at Laramie. I got undergrad there in uh, political science, and then at the time, the rest of the band was still in college, so I decided to stay for grad school, so I got a master's degree in public administration, which always seems to surprise everybody but <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so I went to college straight for seven years and it was it was a blast you know and kind of had a band at the same time but my main thing back then was rodeo and so was college rodeo and pro rodeo and amateur rodeo and so we were most of the time doing that and just kind of playing music on the side but yeah I kind of grew up as a ranch kid that's so cool so what you were a saddle bronc rider yep rode Tell saddle broncs and team rope and calf rope too but my main thing was Riding saddle Bronx. And you made the CNFR a couple times. Yep, Tell my me junior about year and senior year, yep. Made it uh, in the Central Rocky Mountain region, which, uh, you know, Mesa State used to be in our region. So I remember coming down here for all the college rodeos. It was a fun place to be. But uh, yeah, it was fun. Rode saddle Bronx and then college finals, you know, didn't go my way both times just because didn't draw very good and perhaps maybe spent too much time at the Beacon. <laughs> but uh, it was fun experience for sure met a lot of lifetime friends going to cnfr that's so cool. yeah um so you were in college for seven years and your degree you said political science and public administration yep so i got two associates too okay. i got from casper college then a undergrad in political science and a master's which is an mpa public administration so and have those degrees done anything to get you any further in your musical career or are they kind of well, different they really work handy for interviews they get it gets brought up a lot but now i wrote a few songs <laughs> so, about but i've never used my degrees yet you know i mean maybe sometime later in life if i quit playing music i might get into politics or something but we'll see it's uh, <laughs> the way politics are nowadays you I'm probably not, don't want to be involved i don't, don't want to be involved anymore <laughs> yeah but no it's it's been fun i'm College was just a good experience, you know, to learn life lessons. And, you know, obviously went to college for college rodeo and had to pick a degree, but right. it was uh, it was fun, man. I loved being there and met a lot of lifetime friends through college too. So you actually have a song called College. Yep. Some of those experiences I'm assuming are real life. They are. We wrote that, I wrote that with my friend Trana is telling him about my 10 year in college. And he's like, man, we should write a song about that. And we were, I, I, I was a little wild in college, so a lot of them stories we had to clean up a little bit <laughs> to put in the song, but all those stories in that are true, you know, uh, you know, that sliding the Lincoln through a cattle guard is a true story. <laughs> and it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun song. It's kind of autobiographical of uh, my college career for sure. <laughs> yeah. Do you write all your own music? Uh, yeah, typically we wrote, write most of it. You know, some of the stuff we get outside songs from, uh, got a lot of friends in Nashville that write a lot. And so 
once in a while they'll pitch me one that I really like that hits home, I'll cut it. But typically, like my last album I put out, there's 12 songs on it. I wrote 11 of the 12 on there with friends in Nashville. So it, uh, it, it just depends, you know, for what I do, kind of where I grew up in the West, you know, and rodeo and ranch and typically the songwriters in Nashville don't really understand our way of life. Uh, lyrically and you know the lingo ain't quite the same so to get the songs to hit home to people that live out west it's better if i write them you would kind of get a better grasp on what's going on out west yeah how much more personal that is yeah. for you to talk about because i get songs pitched to me all the time that are cowboy songs from nashville i'm like yeah we don't really talk that way and you know my colleagues are you know people that rodeo and people that ranch so like if i was to sing some of those songs it's like eh, what we don't talk like that and like i know so right so it's better just to write them so kind of walk me through that process like do you write the lyrics and then your band comes in with the music or is it all kind of a hands-on where everybody's doing everything well typically we just my band doesn't really write they just kind of play live so i'll go to nashville and write with writers okay and so you kind of write it all at once and you go into a room with either one or two guys and Somebody will have an idea that day about something they heard somewhere, like a saying, you know, like rodeo cold beer or something, or, or just a, an idea for a song, and then you start crafting it. And usually we can get one a day, uh, depending on how easy it comes out. But it seems like the the good ones come out really fast. But yeah, it's a, it's hard. Songwriting for me is hard just because anybody can write a song, but you got to figure out how to write great songs that like the phrasing's correct and what you want to say means the most in three minutes. So you got to get everything in there you can in th a three minute song. So it's tricky to write really great songs. I'm not saying I have, but I'm trying to get there. <laughs> yeah. You just released a song in September, right? Uh, yep. Tell me a little bit about that one. Yeah, we, we had a song come out here just a couple weeks ago yeah called i'm on the whiskey and it's a uh, this is kind of fun when i wrote that with trent wilman who has produced that record my friend jody stevens who produces like luke bryan and stuff and we were just thinking of a good drinking song because everybody we hadn't wrote a drinking song in a while and we thought it'd be a good heartbreak song you know but kind of make it fun so you know it's about a about a guy that's down as luck he lost his girl to a to a rich guy and like well, we said, well, who hasn't been there? But <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, she uh, leaves him for a rich guy on his jet, and he's sitting at the bar drinking his sorrows away. It's called I'm on the Whiskey. It's, a, it's kind of a fun drinking breakup song. So, yeah, it works. it's been going streaming really well, and everybody live has been loving it. I've really been, I mean, I've been listening to your music for quite a while, but that song I really enjoy just hearing yeah. here. Like it, you said, it's super fun. It's not like yeah. a depressing one, right. but it's just a... Okay. Yeah, he, it's, it's like the guy in the song doesn't really care. He's like, she's on the plane, I'm on the whiskey. So he, he don't really care, he's <laughs> yeah. like, whatever. But yeah, it was fun. And just kind of the, the melody of it and the beat's a little different than anything I've done. So it, it kind of fit uh, to go on the album or the next album. It'll fit real real well. So you're working on a new album now? and yep. they'll, So that's not going to be a single that'll go in with it? It'll, it'll, let's see, that one. So I got five songs after the album that were put out we put out three of my two left that are just kind of floaters out there they didn't really go on the last album they're probably not going to go on the next album so they might i might attach them to this album okay. i'm not sure how to release them yet but i got eight already recorded right now that are, we just got done that'll be for the next album after the first year we'll probably start releasing some of those which we're excited about so I always right. try to keep writing and recording all the time and so we got about 10 in the can right now i guess we could put out a full album right now if we wanted but so is that hard to like be on tour and be going constantly and to try to like fit in time to record? Yeah, for sure. It takes up all your time, you know, so like we tour so much that typically if I get done on Sunday somewhere where we're at, I'll fly to Nashville and write and record for a few days and fly back out and meet the buses. So it, it doesn't make a lot for a lot of time being home, but so I'm always on the road, but heck, I like it, you know, and this day and age with music, people are, their attention spans are short and they want stuff right. really fast. So you, the more you can put stuff out as fast as you can i think the fans like and that's kind of the plan nobody really knows so we'll see <laughs> yeah learn with it so it was you had about a three-year gap in between releasing albums didn't you yeah usually there for a while i was doing an album every two years okay so it and then let's see third street album came out right during covid and we were gonna wait and we're like well screw it let's put it Might out during well covid yeah so 
Yeah, it's, I think we were doing every two years, but but now we're trying to just do a whole bunch of singles and put them on an album. So right on. hopefully a little faster in this next round. We'll see. It's just it's hard to keep keep up that much. Yeah, I bet. yeah. I bet. So, what would you say has been like your greatest challenge in the music industry? I don't know. I guess just learning the craft of it. So, like, I tell people all the time, like, I know way more about ranching and rodeoing than I do music. I just ended up in music, so I had to learn everything from scratch. You know, like, I didn't come from a musical background really, and there's not a big musical scene out west, like Wyoming and even Denver. I mean, there's not a big music scene, so it ain't like the guys in Texas where everybody plays or Nashville and. So we had to, just, had to learn everything on our own, which is why, you know, it's our career, it's, I would say it's taken longer than maybe some, but like everything that we've acquired along the way, we've earned ourselves. So it's not like we won a show or got famous on TikTok or any of that stuff. So we've kind of inched out every, every step of the way our career, which is rewarding in the end, better than just like it happening fast. And so I would say just having to learn the, the craft of putting together a live show and then putting together songs that people like and then learn how to tour and like there's all these aspects of the music business that you don't think of when you start playing you're like oh this is fun but there's a whole business side of it that's uh pretty intense so but it's been shoot we've we've loved it every step of the way wouldn't change it for anything how did you get started i guess i should have asked that maybe a little bit earlier but you said you played with your band through college what? yeah so like in high school, me and a couple guys started a band just for fun, just because for a talent show, I think. We were all in high school band, you know, and learned a few songs, I think, for graduation and this talent show. And then we just started playing. We started getting hired around the, the county and started to get paid for it. Like, man, get paid for this? So, you know, went on to college, had the same guys. And we uh, started kind of taking off, but, you know, still rodeo was the main thing. So it was always just kind of a fun college job. You know, everybody else had to get side jobs. Like mm -hmm. ours was playing on the weekends when we weren't rodeoing. So yeah, just kind of, and you know, we were a cover band for a long time doing that. So that's kind of how we learned our craft of learning to play, learning to put together a live show. And so that's where we learned, I guess, the, the foundation of music was high school and college. Yeah. So then you, you're, did you go straight into music full time after you graduated college, or what was that in between stage? It was. It was I was kind of doing both. So I was. So when I got my master's degree, I had to do an internship. So they told me I could do anything. So I was supposed to go, you know, do something in politics. So <laughs> my department head said, "Do whatever you want." So I moved to Nashville and got an internship at a with a guy named T.K. Kimbrell. He managed Chris Ledoux and and. And Toby Keith so I interned there and kind of learned the ropes and while I was down there I made an album my very first album called Honky Tonk Road and then I was still rodeoing when I got back from that and playing and then I was picking up too so I was a pickup man for a while and riding and singing kind of got to the point where I was kind of doing media mediocre at all three and I was like well my dad said you know just pick one and do it good so kind of weighed my options I thought well I think I can sing a lot longer than I can ride bucking horses, so chose to do music full time and kind of get a leg up instead of just rodeoing for a few more years. I thought I'll just jump right into the music and get to it. So that's well, kind of where we ended up today. I think you made the yeah. right choice. Well, I can sing a lot longer than, like I said, riding bucking yeah. horses because it's a young man's game. But it's a it was a good choice. We're we're glad we're where we are today. So I've heard that you and Chris Ledoux are actually the only two people that have ever both sang at Cheyenne Frontier yeah. Days and competed there. What's it like, like having that title with somebody so incredible? It's cool having that stat with Chris, you know, and you know, Cheyenne's very special to us. My dad won Cheyenne 1971, who won the rookie bronc ride, and then, you know, uh, Chris and dad rodeoed at the same time, so they were friends. And then, you know, me and my brothers growing up rode there, and I never dreamed I'd ever be Play doing there. music for a career and so I was riding there no didn't think anything of it and then a few years later you know we'd been playing around people we got asked to play the main stage it's like oh that's awesome we get home from Merle Haggard on the main stage at Cheyenne I rode here so it's very special to us and then one of the committee members told me that like you know you and Chris are the only two that rode here and played here I'm like wow that's a cool stat to have with Chris that is yeah. so cool yeah so it's a it's very unique 
Did you know him pretty well growing up? Yeah, yeah, Chris helped us a lot getting started, you know. We'd always go to KC to those nightly rodeos mm -hmm. and grew up friends with, you know, his kids, you know, Will was a great friend of mine, still is, and Cindy, their daughter, and Bo. Me and Bo were close to the same age rodeo, and so Bo and I went to high school national finals in uh, Springfield, Illinois, and so knew the family real well, and then Chris would always be at the high school rodeos and stuff, and Chris let us open for him when, when I was 20, and that's what kind of kicked it off. You know, he, he just kind of believed in me. I guess I think we were probably, I know we were probably pretty terrible. <laughs> He's like, shoot, come to Billings and open for us, and that kind of made me think, ah, maybe I want to do this forever. So, but yeah, it was it was very special. So is he kind of the one that inspired you to? I would to take say so. Yeah, you know, just because he was a Wyoming guy that was a cowboy yeah. that that rodeoed and did music, and there's not a lot of people that do both. So I was like, man, I kind of like what Chris did, you know, and he he earned it the hard way too, just playing out west and never really moved to Nashville. And I was like, if he did it that way, I was like, maybe I can do it that way. So that's why I kind of followed in his footsteps, like building a big foundation of fans out west versus going to Nashville and trying to like start it there I just wanted to keep the West thing going I think that's so special because like you said Nashville has plenty of plenty of people and plenty of a, a large reach in audience where right. if you can connect to those people at right. home where you grew up connect to people like you yeah and that was the plan all along if we build a big foundation of fans out West Nashville can't ignore us forever and it's that's it's been really starting to happen like getting a lot of traction in Nashville so it's like it is starting to work but it was a Maybe the uphill battle. I don't know. Then I, I think it's hard living in Nashville making it too. I don't know. But right. we did it this way, and we're we're glad that we we chose that way. That's so cool. Is that where you call home now? Uh, no, I still live in Wyoming. Yeah. That's so, really cool. Yeah, I'm from Moorcroft and have a house in Laramie too. So I'm kind of between both places. But Wyoming will always be home. I can't really fully move to Nashville. I don't think. But I'm there a lot anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what? What advice would you give to somebody who might be out there right now struggling in the same way that you were trying to make it to be the next country music star? Man, I don't know, I would just say, I would tell people not to chase anything. Everybody hears a sound, like you might hear Zach Bryan, like I wanna be like him, or like Luke Combs, like I wanna be like, just be you, you know, like if, I think authenticity is huge today in music. So like you can see if somebody's singing about something they're not, truthful about I see artists all the time singing a song like you never did that or you know I would just tell people whatever you think you sound like just be that people will like it or they don't and the ones that don't that's fine there's a lot there'll be a lot of people that do you know and I would say you know like I like I said I learned playing cover music which kind of got us to where we are today but I wish I'd have not done that so long we you know we were cover band longer than we probably should have been but start writing your own stuff and start doing your own music and that craft will get better as time goes on but the younger you start doing that the the faster it starts getting better and so i would say write your own music and just be yourself and people will like it or they don't and so you can't be chasing it those sounds around you know like zach Bryan, that stuff is big today but you don't know what's going to be like in five years like Florida George Line was big for a while, you know, that sounds kind of went away. So you don't really want to chase them sounds because you don't know what's changing to just, and maybe maybe it's your sound that they like next. So just be whatever you sound like and write the stuff you care about, be authentic. And don't, don't listen to what everybody says on the internet. <laughs> I was gonna say, is that hard sometimes to hear those critiques of yeah. not try to be the next Zach Bryan to try to chase those sounds. Is that hard to stay authentic or are you pretty well grounded in knowing like who you want to yeah, be? Yeah, I just know who I am. Like, you know, we're not trying to fool anybody. Like I'm a cowboy from Moorcroft, Wyoming. So like for me to jump out and sing some of those songs that some of these other artists that do, and that's, that's no dig on them. They do them great. Right. It's just not what I do. So like I sing songs about cowboys and I sing songs about partying and I sing songs about the West. So that fits me and people can look at me and be like, oh, that's true. I can see he's telling the truth about it versus like, I don't know, it gets misconstrued sometimes in, in songs and the scene and I don't know, just be yourself, I guess. <laughs> I think that's great advice and honestly yeah. something that can kind of translate into anything. I yeah. mean, 
music anywhere you go, any avenue. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a great message overall. Just yeah, you know, because you, you struggle with that growing up. You're like, man, I want to be like George Strait, or, which right. I love, and I want to be like Chris, who I love. But like, I never really wanted to fully be those guys. There's only one Chris Ledoux, and there's only one George Strait, and there's only, you know, all there's these guys. There's only one Chancey Williams. That, yeah, so it's like, I'm just going to do what I think I sound like and the songs I want to do. And like I said, you, you beat yourself up thinking, I hope everybody's going to like this song. And then you just got to train yourself mentally to be like, if they like it, they like it. If they don't, I don't really care. <laughs> you know, because there's some people that like it. Maybe some people don't. That's fine. I don't like all types of music either. So it's just to each their own. I think that's a great, yeah. a great way to look at it. Yep. So I think that's kind of all of the questions that I have for well, you. I mean, I could go on for hours, but... No, I appreciate you asking. Those are good questions. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? I would always just encourage people to go stream our stuff. You know, this day and age with music, we got a lot of fans out there, and our fan base, they come to a lot of shows. We usually have a lot of people show up and buy merch and buy CDs still. And But, like, nowadays, everything's gauged in Nashville off these streaming numbers. And, like, I tell people all the time, like, shoot, Half of our fans don't even have Spotify. Like my brother right. doesn't, my parents don't, and it's just it's it's a younger generation thing that everybody streams stuff now, and I do now. But I always encourage people like if you like our stuff, go download it and stream the heck out of it because that those numbers represent, I guess, what they think of us in Nashville. Not that I really care, but it's nice to show yeah. them like, hey man, we got friends out west that do, you know they stream the heck out of us. And where can we find you? Yeah, all of our stuff's at chanceywilliams.com. It's got all the Instagram, TikToks, and all the all the stuff. You can go see our shenanigans on the road. And yeah, so we'll go check it, chanceywilliams.com. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again so much for being here with me and talking to me day, yeah. today. I'm so excited to watch you perform tonight. Well, thanks for see having me on. Goes. I appreciate it. That was fun. Great interviewer. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. And yeah, once again, thank you for giving the little college girl a chance. Yeah, well, thanks. Well, good luck at College Rodeo this year. It's thank you. had a lot of fun. I heard you won the region last year. That's awesome. Congrats. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Did you ever win the region? No, ended up no? second twice, but uh, I was giving my friend heck about it. He got a saddle and I got a duffel bag. Isn't it funny, <laughs> like, the difference in awards? Yeah. Like, you got a, I got a duffel bag, you got a saddle. We're, like, one point apart. But I was teasing, <laughs> but, yeah. It was a fun experience, but good luck this year. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. Once again, thank you for wa talking to me today. Don't forget to go stream Chansey's music. You can go to chanceywilliams.com, you said? Yep, and go to on Spotify and Apple Music and all the stuff. Anywhere music can be streamed. That's right. Okay, why stop now? This story is just getting started.